Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I have a very cool sheath to show you. Um, this one is for a Bark River Squad Leader. Um, this is definitely one of my favorite Bark River knives. I've got one as well with, uh, mine's a little bit different. It doesn't have the lanyard hole. It's got hollow pins and it's, uh, I'm not actually sure what the handle material is. Natural micarta or something like that. Um, in any event, Excuse me. Sorry, guys. In any event, this is a really cool and versatile sheath. This one's going to Tom, and Tom is going to be doing some traveling, and he just wants to have something good for self-defense. So he has picked, in my opinion, the right company. Bark River makes outstanding knives. They're just do-all, uh, especially something like this. This is small enough to EDC. It's large enough to do a lot of really uh, rugged tasks, and it has... I think that's a quarter inch thick blade stock. So if this, this knife is very beefy, very capable, and uh, I think it's just small enough to work as an EDC. So Tom has asked me to make him a sheath that can wear as a dangler and can also be something, you know, on the relatively concealable side, um, can wear scout style, can wear vertically, all this different stuff. So I talked him into doing a pair of soft loops to do as many different carry configurations as possible, as well as doing a detachable plate with a dangler, uh, a dangler apparatus on it. So right now I have it configured for the dangler. So let's take a look at this. It's OD green, and he said any accents he would like to be done in some kind of earthy colors. So I picked coyote gray as the accent. I think that's a really nice color combination there. Basically what you're seeing here is a plate that enables the dangler carry but it doesn't compromise any of the other carry situations uh, with any of the other carry setups rather with the soft loops because you can just take this plate clean off of the sheath so it won't inhibit anything else that's going on. Um, if you can get a good close up, uh, maybe I can adjust my lights here. I'm not sure if this will work or not. Um, you can kind of see that it's a two-tone plate. The back side of the plate is OD green and for all intents and purposes, the plate is symmetrical. So you can actually flip this around. Uh, you can turn it 180 degrees this way. You can straight up flip it over like that. Uh, it shouldn't matter what direction it's in. It will line up with both sides of the sheath. And it does provide you with a range. You can see these are spaced at, uh, I want to say, a half inch interval. Yeah, it's a half inch all the way up and down. And you can see that the dangler, uh, the D-ring adapter itself, also has three different spacings on there. So you have a pile of ride height options as far as the dangler goes. Um, I mean, you could even technically carry it as an inverted dangler if that's something you wanted to do. Um, so yeah, there's not too much to show as far as the dangler apparatus goes itself. It's just a slight variation on what I normally do, which is uh, something like this. Normally, I create this shape on the back of the sheath you can see this is the front this is the back and i'll bend this away from the knife and put a couple holes in it and attach some such d-ring adapter through those holes and that creates a really strong rugged um, dangler carry that will it's got counter pressure against the sheath so it's not going to get bent um, you see out there a lot of uh they're called like drop loops uh, things like that that guys are making out of kydex and it's like attached just well, let me show you again using this thing it would be attached like just here just through a couple rivets on the side and it's a big piece that takes up all this space up here and then it has like a bend in it like it's 90 degrees and then it'll come up like that and you attach the dangler there that's fine the only problem with it is if you were to catch your sheath on something and bend it you could eventually break or crease that um, and it would basically render your sheath totally useless. So I try to avoid that by creating more structurally sound things. This is definitely one of those things. This is stronger even than the dangler that's directly attached to the sheath. Um, it, the only disadvantage of a system like this is it technically puts the weight just a little bit further away from, or it, it puts the, uh, the, the hanging point a little bit further away from the, uh, the actual knife. So the knife would have a tendency to ride just a little bit more canted like that. Um, in a case where the knife is this this size or smaller, I don't think you have to worry about that. If it's really big, really heavy, 
it might actually be a small issue but uh, that just depends on your personal preference on on how the knife hangs so this uh, this I think is probably the strongest way to set up a dangler and uh, it's also just very convenient if you plan on using other carry methods as well since it's detachable so let's take a look really quick the fit and finish on this thing is smoking it has a great click in there's no rattle no play it's got a really nice ballistic one-handed draw it's very smooth and um, like I said you can attach the soft loops I'm gonna actually do that for you right now I'm gonna show you how this works so if you want to switch from a dangler to a soft loop carry you can see that there are four screws holding this plate in place so I'm gonna take those out real quick And you can see that there are some really thick spacers in between the plate and the sheath. The reason for the spacers and the particular thicknesses that I chose is because you do want the plate to be, see these guys are a little bit more than a half inch and these are, I got two of them that are a half inch. And you want the half inch ones to be lower on the blade. You want the thickest ones up near the handle. The reason is because if this thing is perfectly level to the sheath it's probably not going to be it's going to be bad because the uh, the top of this dangler plate is going to interfere it's going to contact the kydex and that'll that'll kind of keep it pinched shut and it'll make it difficult or impossible to draw uh, so you don't want that what you want to do is cinch down the half inch ones so that the plate is kind of kicked out at a slight angle and then bring the longer ones in until the plate is close to but not touching the rest of the sheath up here near the mouth. So that's the best way to do this. It'll keep it at a slight angle, it'll make sure there's clearance and no interference with the draw and of course the D-ring moves so you don't have to worry about you know whether it's straight or not. It's going to correct itself and hang where the weight wants it to hang. Alright so that's that. You can see this is totally ambidextrous at this point you can switch any kind of carry setup you want um, using the uh, soft loops and how these guys work I have the uh, I have the hardware just cinched down right now but what you'd want to do is always make sure you keep the hardware attached to the soft loops when the soft loops are not attached to the sheath that's thing one thing two is I would just choose you know let's say he's gonna carry it right hand scout carry so he's going to need this sheath to be able to attach to his, uh, what am I trying to say here? He's going to need it to attach behind his back so he can reach behind and grab with his right hand. So I'm going to set it up for right hand scout carry real quick. If I can figure out how to use a screw, there we go. So it's as simple as that and now all you have to do is run these loops you go under your belt put them up through the belt and you snap them shut these are one-way snaps or pull the dot snaps as they're called they're very rugged um, they are super secure they're not just gonna pop loose on you the only way they can come off is by pushing specifically from the top of the button down 
it can't undo any other way. So they are really reliable, really strong. And actually, while I'm looking at this, I think I'm going to move this one. I'm just going to move it over one loop, one eyelet, so it's not directly over the mouth of the sheath. I think that would be a little better. All right. So pull the dot snaps uh, are really rugged, strong, reliable, all that good stuff. And I think that uh, soft loops are a really great option. Now, one of the reasons why I recommend um, soft loops, uh, one of the situations I would recommend soft loops in is if somebody is asking for the best bang for their buck in terms of versatility, what they can get out of a single carry setup. So with soft loops, you can attach them to your belt or you can attach them to molly. You can put these things through molly webbing as long as they're spaced correctly apart. That's why I've used half inch spacing along here so that you can actually um, measure out, you know, skip one hole, skip two holes, sorry, like you see here. And that's at one and a half inches, which is the interval center to center on molly webbing. So you do have the option to, uh, to attach to molly. The other really cool thing is Soft loops can work for inside or outside the waist, <clears throat> excuse me, inside or outside the waistband. So if you're looking for a way to carry the sheath, sometimes concealed, sometimes not concealed, soft loops are a really great way to have that all in one setup. Now, if you're going to change positions, you do need to reconfigure where you have these attached. So that's why I've done a lot of eyelets really close together so that you have as many options as possible. And then finally, the other thing that this allows you to do, uh, and usually it's a selling point for me on a tech locks, uh, is that you can change the angle. You can change it to a lot of different angles. How you would do that with soft loops, let's say you wanted to carry this at like a 45 degree angle on your non-dominant side so you could reach across, do a cross draw with it. How you'd want to set that up is maybe attach one loop here and the other loop across from it. So you basically just look at what would be a straight line across, what represents where your belt would carry, and that's how you would set that up. So you really do have just a pile of options with soft loops. Um, they are not my favorite way to carry, but they are really, really versatile. And uh, I get a lot of questions from people about, you know, adding a tech lock so that they can carry on belt or molly. A tech lock cannot carry on both. It only carries on belts or straps that will fit inside that hole there and you can change the belt spacers so you have anywhere between a half inch and two and a quarter inches to play with so it'll fit most duty belts things like that but it does not fit into molly webbing so i really want to uh to be clear about that um a lot of guys you know are looking for that feature so just just be careful with that i think you might be able to to kind of let me see really quick. I might have a solution for you. It's not going to be as versatile, but let me measure this out. All right. So I think you could probably actually slip the forks of a tech lock into Molly and attach it like that. But you'd, you'd have, uh, well, yeah, the tech lock would stay vertical. Yeah, you might be able to actually do that. I've never tried that and I've never seen it done, but you know what? That might actually just work. So perhaps tech lock is just as versatile. The only thing is tech locks for sure do not carry inside the waistband unless you build some weird apparatus for it. It's, uh, I don't think it's worth it. I've, d I've messed with that concept a little bit because I do love tech locks, but for inside the waistband and outside the waistband and Molly, this is definitely the way you want to go. Um, the other advantage of this is it doesn't have to be at one and a half inches. It can go up to three, it can go to six, whatever uh, the spacing is that you would want for Molly, uh, you'd be able to accommodate as long as the sheath is large enough. So anyway, that's what I have for you. So I'm pretty excited about this sheath. I think it's really cool. I am a Bark River fanboy, so of course I was excited to work on a Barky. And uh, once again, this is the squad leader. This guy's in CPM 3V with black micarta handle scales, just a gorgeous, gorgeous knife, super capable, super rugged. So, all right guys, let me know what you think of this sheath. Let me know what you think of the Bark River Squad Leader. Tell me what your favorite Bark River is. If you have a lot of experience with a bunch of different models, I would love your input down below. And uh, 
yeah, I think that's all I got for you. So thanks for sticking around. Tune in for the next one. God bless.